I bet you didn't know I used to take a shower with my daughter. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. She'd lather me up. I'd lather her up. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. Look it. It's back together. Seal came in. So, this is kind of weird. I've seen some videos on with people doing a transmission change. And I'm laughing my ass off, like, what a bunch of idiots. They're pulling the car all apart, they're pulling the airbox off, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're wasting their time doing stupid shit. And, uh, because they don't know where the dipstick is. One guy thinks that there's some type of a clip you have to release to get this out. And there isn't, it just sits on a spade. There's no clip to release this. Um... <laughs> Okay, this says this transmission holds 3.2 quarts of transmission fluid, right? I got four quarts in there now. So there's four quarts in the garbage. I've got one left. Now I'm using the Valvoline CVT ATF, right? What you're supposed to use. So here's your little dipstick. And where does your little dipstick go? in your little pants the dipstick is right there look down through the freaking you can get your hand in here which i've done 150 times and your dipstick is right there there's just a metal tang sticking up you don't need pliers you don't need a screwdriver you don't need a goddamn sledgehammer to get it out so i don't know what's wrong with these people taking all this shit apart so i'm going to check my fluid again i got four quarts in it now watch how the magic happens here. I'll come in a different direction. Well, I don't know if you can see it. Wait a minute. Can you see it? What am I looking at? Anyways, stick your hand down in the freaking hole. You stick your damn filter and you can see it over the top of the battery. Maybe not. I can't get a good angle where the hell I'm at here. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, you can kind of see the dipstick dangling down there. Dangle, dangle. Zoom in, you bitch. So there's a dipstick hole right there. You can see it. Let me aim my light on it better. Okay, you see the circle? So there is the dipstick hole. So you put your stupid dipstick in the hole, which is hard because I got my camera in my face now. All right, we're in. We just had dipstick sex. So push it in with your thumb. See, here's my fingers. Hello. And just grab it back out. Pour your hand back up and out, and there it is. So now this is telling me right now that I've got, I'm right between the marks, see that? So it's not low and it's not high. Now remember, one side's always gonna read higher than the other. Don't go by the high side, always go by the low side. So that's where I'm at right now between the two bumps which is satisfactory. So, what I'm finding out is weird as shit is, if it says it holds 3.2 quarts, how come I just put four quarts in and I can probably put in another quarter of a quart to get me where I want to be? I don't understand that. I don't have a damn funnel. My funnel freaking broke on me. So, I can't get that in there because the son of a bitch broke. I tried to bend it and it went twang. So what I've been using is this, a motorcycle, a little mini gas tank, I stick the hose down in the tube, I put my fluid in here, and then I pressurize this and blow the fluid down in the transmission filler tube. So what I'm going to do, I want to bring the training fluid up to that top line. I'm not leaving it in the middle like that, you know, because I'm telling you right now, if you have a Chevy Spark, a 13, 14, 15, change your goddamn fluid at least every 10,000 miles. Or you won't have a transmission. Because Chevy says change it at 45. Don't freaking do that. My transmission went out in this car at 45,088. And they put a brand new one in. So now I've got a new transmission. This is my first oil change on it. Piece of cake. Ain't no big deal. And uh, new filter. 
And, um, yeah. So, for some reason, I got a different pan gasket on this. Some of the pan gaskets have one more bolt than the other one. So, my original tranny had, uh, I don't say 14 bolts. And this one they put in has like 13 bolts. Because on the corner, there's like a corner that comes around. And there's usually one, two, three. Well, they eliminated the middle bolt, so the corner's like flatter. So, I don't know what the hell happened there. So, I had to put a new axle seal in. And if you had to replace the axle seal on your car, this is what you need to know. Um, if you're doing the passenger side, the passenger side gas seal is bigger than the driver's side. The shaft hole is the same. The outer dimension is bigger. So, the 1106 2519 is the passenger side, and this one is new because I couldn't use it. Now, the driver's side is 2519107. Okay, so let's look at the difference. So, this is the old one I took out. And these are really weird ass looking seals. They got this rubber lip here around the top. And that goes into like a dust boot. There's a shield that goes over that. Now this is the passenger side, right? Now they look pretty close, don't they? Well, let's just turn them around this way now. All right, now look at this. My one seal fits inside the other seal. See that? Because they are different heights. That much of a difference right there. Why did they do that? I have no freaking clue. That's the difference. So the driver's side is smaller. The passenger side is a bigger hole. Now the inside dimensions are the same. Don't make the mistake I did. So passenger side is 1106 I'm um, wait a minute yeah the driver's side is at 1107 1107 for the driver's side oh you can probably see that driver's side and the passenger side which says seals new because I didn't use it is 1106 I wrote 1107 for passenger side just so I remember I gotta scribble that out of there so I don't confuse myself. So, anyways, that's the difference. Well, I'll, I ain't gonna forget now. So, so, for some reason, this transmission went in 8,000 miles and I ended up with an axle seal leaking, and Chevy did not give a shit. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought it was a three year, 36,000 mile warranty on transmissions. Uh, Carper said yes, but the dealer said no. You know? Now, the dealer changed hands from Ste to uh, Lead Car Chevrolet. Now, what Lead Car Chevrolet has been doing, if they didn't do the training, they don't want to know nothing. They don't want to do any warranty work. They don't give a shit. So, I thought for sure today I'd be getting my call back from uh, GM. Well, I still might, but, well, maybe not. It's 4.30 now. So, I'm going to top this fluid off the way... It should be topped off, and then I'm going to take it for a ride. But I'll tell you right now, 8,000 miles on this Chevy Spark, that fluid came out like dirty engine oil. Now, your transmission fluid, and this is weird now, your training fluid is not red. Don't think it's red. It's not. So, it's clear. It's clear like water. So, if you ever see anything on the ground, it's like, well, that ain't training fluid. Here's the color of your transmission fluid right here on my finger. Absolutely clear, no color whatsoever. So be aware of that. It ain't like the old cars where the transmission fluid is red and then your reservoir is green. Well, no, the reservoir now are orange. They got to keep messing with shit, you know? They just got to keep dicking with shit. They can't leave anything alone. So anyways... Yeah, the cars now take this. Dex cool. So, yeah. Don't put in this old green shit. Don't do that. 
because you'll be in trouble. And every car is synthetic now. My car takes 5W20. My wife's car takes 0W20. I'm like, what the hell is that water? I could just piss in the oil for that. So, um, I, I sprinkled a little bit of oil down there in a tiny pan, but I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to put it in gear a couple times. I got the dipstick out and uh, make sure I get the fluid fully circulated in there. I've already done it once, and then I realized it's really low. I figured, ugh, okay, boom, reverse, drive, neutral, park, and I called Chevy. I said, do I check this thing running or not? They said, running. I said, okay. All right, I'll be back in a minute to look under the car. Okay, so the manual's got to be wrong because... I just put in, it says 3.2 quarts, I just put in 4 quarts, 4 ounces. And I brought it up exactly, perfectly on the top line. Let's see, 4, 24, yeah. So 4 quarts, 4 ounces. Now before I go anywhere, I want to make sure nothing's leaking. Always be safe, not sorry. You know, because if you're dumping tranny fluid, I spilled some on the floor right there. I see the puddle where I've been sticking that hose in and out. It's been dripping a little bit, so I'm not too concerned at the moment. So, we'll lift her up, get a good looky-poo underneath, and then I'll take it out for a ride, go around the block, and then I'll come back in, put it back up in the air, and uh, check my axle seal. Nice having a lift in your house, you know. I just got to watch the ceiling, that's all. It's so nice to have a forklift. Not a forklift, car lift. I like a car lift. All right. Something just fell off here. What the hell just fell off? Or something fall. Oh, my block of wood fell on the ground. Okay. What do we got? So there's my new axle seal I put in up there. I am not seeing nothing is wet other than the little trickle down that I did right there. Um, there's my cute little motor running up there. So, I already dried the drive shaft off. I put a little blob of grease on it when I put it in there. So now you can see right here was where I I drip some. So you want to get that off of there because it'll spray back and it'll look like shit. And I know I got some up on the top of the transmission also. But so there's two magnets in this pan. There's one here obviously, and there's one right there. So when you pull this pan off, now this is where I'm talking about. See this corner? where it shows two, bu two bolts. Mine had three bolts in that corner. This one's got two. Now this is another thing they say. You pull this out and there's a straw hooked to that. Um, so there's a tube hooked to that that goes up inside the transmission. And what you're supposed to do is while it's running, take that plug out. Whatever drips out of it, let it drip out until it stops, put it back in. And that's supposed to be your level. Me? Bullshit. Oh, I got tiny fluid all over the freaking place up in there. No. I can't help it. I mean, you pull the hose out and that shit goes everywhere. I'll just dry it off best I can. I'll not get my fingers caught in anything. I hope not. So, let's give it a quick wipey wipey. That look better in there. Yeah, I still spilled a little bit, but you know when you pull that when you when you when you pull the hose out of the transmission, it's like a whip. Anything left in this hose just goes flinging all over the freaking place. Kinda like when you gotta go pee really bad. You know? Kinda like that. Alright, so am I safe to let this down? I think so. So I gotta hold back this stupid thing. And let her down. 
And then finally, after uh, how long has it been? A goddamn week and a half? Over a week? Waiting for that seal to come in? I could finally drive my freaking car. But I can't. Because I just parked my wife's car behind my car. Outside. Oh, so I gotta bring her car back in and take this out for a ride. Bring her back in, lift it back up, check the axle seal. And if that's good, I'm happy. And I'm really happy I changed the training fluid. I'm telling you guys, if you don't know about Sparks or the um, Nissan, the hell is that called? The Nissan some shit. If, it, if you have a Jetco transmission, I don't know, CV7 or some weird freaking numbers, change your training fluid often. So I'm writing this fluid change down in the book, and then I'm going to change it at 10,000 miles again because these are self-destructive transmissions. You ignore them, you're going to be paying the price. So, unfortunately, that Chevy's a bunch of freaking... Uh-oh, that didn't sound good. Did I just set this down on... Did I just leave something under here and I set it down on it? Did I just crush something? What the fuck was that? Well, I've never made that noise before. Let's go back up, see if I just pancake something. What the? Something just did not sound right. It's crazy. What's Nothing under there. What the hell's going on here? I don't see nothing. Was it just breaking my balls? Is there something caught some freaking place? See, I gotta put little pieces of wood in like this to level it. What the hell was that freaking bang? See, I don't like shit like that. When I hear noises like that, it scares the shit out of me. Oopsie. No, that cord's out. Everything's clear. What the hell's going on here? Let's try this again. Don't make another noise, you bitch. Quietly sit down. All right. It's down. Huh. Well, that was weird. It must be something got caught on something or something. I don't know. It might have been that block of wood because it looked like a chunk was taken out of it. I think that's what happened. All right. So, I'm gonna get this out of my doorway. I got, I got stuff moved all over the place in here. Because the big monster over here, that took up my snowblower spot. So... Okay. Maybe one of the ramps got screwed up. All right, everybody. I'll be back. I'm going to go take a ride with this and come back and take a look and, and cross my fingers that that shit ain't leaking because the seal went in really nice, so I should be good. Okay. So we're cruising along at a massive 40. I forgot that when I was trying to get the ball joint apart, I hit the back of the uh, dust cover for the brakes. So I heard that go a couple of times. But the transmission just shifted freaking beautiful. That's where I got the trailer from, that guy's house. Just scared the fuck out of him. Oh, I can turn on my big floodlight going, Hello, everybody. Look at me. I got a big light in my car. Well, my headlights look brighter than the camera than it does in a car. Which way will I go? I'll go left. I'll go up around the block that way. Give her a good good round the block. This is a country block. This is like a mile by a mile and a half by a mile and a half by a mile and a half. That's a country block. One mile square. 
teddy bear. Oh, right in gear. Nice. Went in a ten. I'm listening for it. There it goes. In a thirty-five. So there's the two shifts. 10 and 35, and then it's supposed to go into lockup. Well, the converter now locks right dead solid with the engine. So it's one to one, just like when you let go of the clutch on your truck. So the RPM's reading two grand right now, if you can see it. It should eventually drop down a little bit once it goes into lockup. I don't know, this road is too uppy downy. Uppy downy, uppy downy. It's funny when you drive around at night, you can see in people's windows, you can see these little tiny TVs they have on the walls. Like, what the hell are you watching with that? Ooh, the brakes are a little dirty. I haven't driven it for a while. All right, now let's see how this is gonna do from a dead stop. Downshift, did you see that? Yeah, you see that jump? What if I just roll slowly for a minute? Huh. Okay, it just jerked down in the first. See? It wants so bad to take off in second. Freaking car, still the same shit. Oh, I gotta get gas. And now there goes the other ship. It goes wee. Now let's see if I can get it to get up in the overdrive. Let me stop on the gas for a minute here. This is the long road, so. Seatbelt, seatbelt, yeah, I see it flashing. What I like about this car is the automatic headlights. I don't even have to dick with them. But I usually shut them off in the daytime. It's like, I don't want my headlights on in the daytime. What the hell? Anyways, let's go back to the garage and look underneath. All right, we are back from our Yahoo ride. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? No leak. We have no freaking leak. Just a little grease residue. That's it. Nothing leaking. No pan gasket leak. No driver's side, passenger side leaking. Nothing. I think we got it. By Jove, he's got it. Well, so there you go. How do you like that? Quick fix, huh? Little hose clamp around this springy thingy they always fall off heat shields always fall off luckily my heat shield is pretty good see my car looks like crap under here because it's uh i spray the shit out of it so look at that airbags my airbags still in there here's my train horns womp womp Oh, my muffler shield. Oh, that's right. That's not a muffler shield. Oh, so my drum was scratching right there where I was hitting it. You can see the scrape it did. Zoom in, you dirty bastard. Right, let's hook this up here. So, right there is where the chisel slipped. And that was rubbing on the road, so. Oh, there we go. There we go. I fixed it. There we go. I fixed it. Perfect. Yeah, I kind of hit it against the rotor. So in the beginning, I heard it going like that. Just like that. All right. So there we go. Getting dizzy? Woo, we us get dizzy. All right. I'm happy. I got my damn car back now. So 
Sweet. On to the next challenge of who the hell knows what's going on next. Got to get the trailer done except for the tires. I think I'm going to look on Walmart for tires. If I can just pick up the tires, I'll just put them on. Those rims look beautiful on there. So I don't think the rims have any rust on it. And now that I've got the most expensive tire machine in the world from Harbor Shit, I can change my own tires. Those I could do by hand. That ain't no big deal. Baby tires. Well, everybody, I hope this video helped out some Chevy owners, Spark owners. Um, I want to get them Chevy on, you know, like I said, on tape so you can hear what they're saying. Because you'd be sitting there shaking your head like, did they just really say that? So, anyhow... Have a good one. And this video is over. Boing.